Okay, this is definitely a challenging problem. Um, I have a pendulum starting from an initial angle of theta naught, and I release it from rest. And what I'm asked to find here is the tension as a function of angle. So we're really just trying to solve for all these moments in time and get a general expression for t of theta for any angle less than the original angle I released it from, of course, because it can't go higher than that initial angle once I release it. The way I'm going to approach this is I'm going to find the speed of this pendulum at some angle theta in general by looking at energy conservation. So I've got to come up with some expression for how far it dropped, and then I should be able to figure out how fast it's going by the time it gets to some angle theta. Once I have that speed, I'm, I'm confident that I can figure out through force analysis and circular motion analysis what the tension is in the string. So let's give this a shot. For the absolute lowest point of the pendulum, I'm going to put a reference line in here and say that that's y equals 0. Then I want to find the initial height of the pendulum. Well, this thing has a, a length of L, so this distance right here is L. And at the initial angle, the pendulum bob is over here. So this height right here, the distance from its vertical location to where the string is tied, that's going to be an L cosine theta. And that gives me enough to figure out the height. It's this missing chunk here, and that's going to be an L minus L cosine theta naught. Okay, the expression is similar if I just go to a general angle theta. It's just that it's going to be an L minus L cosine theta instead of theta naught. So I think we're all set up here. I'm going to say E initial equals E final. And I'm just comparing these two moments here. My initial is where I started at theta naught. And my final is just some arbitrary point in between. So in my initial state, I've got mg y initial. That's all my energy. In the final state, I've got mg y final plus some kinetic energy. But what's y initial? That's L minus L cosine theta naught. How about Y final? L minus L cosine theta when I'm located at that arbitrary angle theta. And then plus a 1 half MV squared. And what I'm going to do here is solve for V and then get into the circular motion analysis. Notice that M cancels. Also, when I distribute the g's over these L minus L cosine theta terms, I get a GL on both sides, and those are going to cancel. So I don't have to worry about that. And I want to move sort of everything to the left-hand side so I can isolate V. So I have a negative GL cosine theta on the right-hand side. I'm going to add that to the left-hand side. It gives me a GL cosine theta. And then I already had a negative GL cosine theta naught over there. And then I'm going to multiply the whole thing by 2 because I'm trying to isolate V. That gives me V squared. So I'm going to write one more line here to solve for V. And I'll do a little bit of factoring. And V is the square root of 2GL times the cosine of theta minus the cosine of theta naught. Next, I get into the force analysis. And this is it's really a familiar force analysis problem. I have Mg pulling down on this pendulum bob. I'm going to draw in a little axis there because what I need is the force analysis and the radial direction because my acceleration at this point is going to be toward the center of curvature. So I get the component of the force of gravity that's pointing radially. And because this angle is the same angle theta, I'm going to get an mg cosine theta for that piece. Then I look at Newton's second law applied in the radial direction. And because the acceleration is toward the center of curvature, I'm going to use that as my positive direction for the analysis. And I get t minus mg cosine theta, that's f net, is equal to ma, so m. But the a is centripetal here. It's going to be v squared over r. But the radius of curvature we're calling l in this problem. All right, so I have the speed at the moment of interest. And I can plug that in. When I square it, it undoes the square root. I get t minus mg cosine theta equals m over l times the inside of that square root. So 2gl times cosine theta minus cosine theta naught. Some nested parentheses there. 
looks like the L's are going to cancel out. And I'll go ahead and add the mg cosine theta to both sides. And so T is going to be mg cosine theta plus 2mg times cosine theta minus cosine theta naught. When I distribute that 2mg, it gives me a total of 3mg cosine theta. So T is equal to 3mg cosine theta. And then there's the theta naught term. So I'm going to have minus 2mg cosine theta naught. When we move on to part B, we're asked to calculate the angle for which the tension is maximized. Well, I expect that to happen at the bottom because the speed is maximized. And at the bottom, the tension has to fight against gravity pulling directly in the opposite direction as well. Both of those things combine to give me a maximum tension. So I, I really know where it is but I'm going to use calculus to prove it here. And then we want to find the maximum tension. Okay, so what we got from part A is T as a function of theta. How do you find the maximum value of this symbolically? You take the derivative and set it equal to zero. The derivative of the theta not containing term, that's zero. Theta not is just a constant there, and of, of course, M and G aren't functions of theta either. The only thing that's a function of theta is the first term. When I differentiate the cosine, I get a minus sine. So I'm going to put the minus out in front. Minus 3mg sine theta. And we'll set that equal to the 0 and ask what theta has to be to make this true. Well, the sine of 0 is 0. So I end up with theta equals 0. It's what I expected. Again, looking at the diagram, theta equals 0 means straight down. So it's at the minimum height. And what is the tension there? So t of 0. So I'm going to plug back into my original tension function. And I get 3mg cosine of 0 minus 2mg cosine theta naught. And the cosine of 0 is 1. So I end up with t of 0. This maximum tension, if I start at an angle of theta naught, is going to be 3mg minus 2mg cosine theta naught. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.